So welcome back to another quick tip tutorial. Last week I was telling you how I like to create movement in the drum track, especially ones that are programmed like this one. This is a pack that I'm kind of working on. And I like to create a whole song around it. So right now what you have is basics. I've got a, they're stereo for the moment. I'll convert them to mono later, but I want to record the effects first. So you can hear that this already has a true iron and it's also locked into uh, EMT which I have somewhere up here um, all right so welcome back to another edition of uh, production tips and tutorials last week I talked about adding movement to program drums and as you can see Got a very basic drum setup right here. A couple high hats, change over the bridge, uh, kick drums, some crashes, ride cymbal for some movement. Uh, and so one of the things I do have is I recorded a track of just reverb and echo, but what I figured I'd do is I'd show you what I do. So right now I've got a snare track. It already has verb on it that was pre-recorded and I've cut it up to use because I like the sound of it. And just to give you a taste, so nice, simple, tight snare with some reverb. But really what I want to do now is be able to run it through my mixing board. As you can see, it'll come up through one of these guys over here. And then I will route it through these two, which is a Benny dub and then a Chord Chaos Pad 2, which I've had for, oh, thanks to Nate Wise there. Back in 2005, I think he introduced me to this. And this has been on almost every single album I've ever done and production. And the Benny dub is something that's become one of my main go-tos for delay simply because it's got the filters over here uh, of course the volume the feedback and the rate and there's a couple other variables in there but I mainly stick to this the rate and the feedback are my two go-tos uh, so what I want to do first thing is go down here this I'm using Reaper uh, I came from Acid Pro when it was popular and it was available Acid Pro 1 in fact and that was probably about the year 2001 2002 and I went through up to acid 7 and then once it got to that they kind of fell apart it was bought uh, by somebody else and I was kind of left high and dry didn't know what to use for a bit and I found Reaper which was essentially free for a long time you could evaluate it and it was cheap I think it was $40 at the time and it works much like acid it's very drag and drop it's easy and for me I find the editing of clips and your within like i can go here press command s i can add fades just like that i don't have to go up to the timeline like you do in logic you have to go up here then make your you know splice or whatever you want to do this is all drag and drop i can i have the magnet set over there so it snaps or not snaps and then i can cross over uh just very quick and i can record and edit on the fly uh, which makes it very usable for me so i've gone there i've set this up i'm going to route it this is my router and so I've got this just set up to channel 5 and 6. This goes out to my mixing board through one specific channel. And then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to create this track here. And I'm going to create a stereo version of it uh, coming in back on 3 and 4. So now if I undo this and make sure that that's there. Get the chaos pad there and hopefully this should work. Benny Dub does. So you can hear that already. So let me turn off that so you can't hear. So I've got the tempo pretty much set up how I want it. All right, so now that I've got the core chaos pad, one of the things I love about this is it's a little bit noisy, which I'm okay with because it's dub and it's supposed to be have a little grit to it. Is the fact that it's it's tactile. I can move my finger around, get some different tones, brightness and dullness, uh, length, 
wise the time is goes slower and faster so between these two i'll do one pass and so what i'll do is this will be just one pass of say echoes and then i might do another pass of just reverbs uh and what that does allow me to have really minute control over how i want each thing to sound what works what doesn't and i do that rather than doing fader rides i'm not a big fan of the fader ride where i want have might have you know kick hi-hat snare guitars etc split up and then going up and down i like to have precision options to go in and out of stuff so let me give you an example of i'm going to dub this track this will be with the music so you can hear it So that gives you a quick example of using that. I've used it excessively to make a point just to show you how I do it. Um, and one of the advantages of this now is that you can see I've got a whole bunch of different types of echoes, uh, times, sounds, and I can just sift through this and I can go, okay, see what I like. Okay, I like that. That's fine. I'm going, okay, that's too long, so I might want to just do that, and I fade it out, and I'll put a quick fade on that. And I did that, so as we come in with something else, that one's going out, and it doesn't cross over too much. And so one of the things you'll see is I've got different volume levels here, and this can be a problem. So there's two ways that you can address this. One is I can actually just do this and I have the option to uh, just get the volume up on each so it's pretty balanced. Or what I use a lot of, I love this plugin and I highly recommend it for almost everything, the RVox. Uh, and this is from uh, Waves Renaissance Vox because what I can do is just compress the tar out of this thing. Throw a gate on it and it just kind of really... That gives you a lot of options and it keeps the level fairly dynamic um, without compressing it too much, but it brings up those lower volumes rather than having to sit here and kind of piecemeal and go, okay, I want that volumized. I want this one up, um, which you can do for some of these where it gets a little clippy like, I will actually just come in here and I will bring it down a little bit. Ignore that. And so that's... <laughs> So now what I can do is, I like this, I'm gonna go, you know what, I wanna convert this to mono, because I wanna pan this, and I wanna pan it specifically. So I'm gonna go do this, and let's let it run. There you go, so I'm gonna mute that, and now I've got, this is the finished product. I'm going to name it and what I've done down here is panned it so I can try experimenting with some pan so I can do this or one of the other things that's fun to do and this is another way to create movement on the go and keep it going throughout the whole song is if you have a panning option uh, pan man let's go down to AU pan pan man sound toys I love sound toys products uh, I use a few of them specifically the pan man the phaser the Echo Boy Jr. is terrific. Uh, Fab Filter I use a lot. So I'll just stick with the default right here and have a listen. So right now it kind of goes, it shoots across. It's very wide and there's no smoothing. So the smoothing will stop it from going hard. It'll actually get that nice soft, slow. 
the width I don't need it to be too huge across and the rate I want it slow uh, and that's pretty much what I'll do for a lot of stuff you can hear it kind of going left and right So, and I'll bring it down in the mix so it's not too obvious. You want to hear it subtly. So when you're listening, you might be focused on the skanks or something else uh, that's coming in and out. And it'll just kind of be there either in your left or right. And it'll just add those subtle nuances that kind of keep your ear going and interested. So last week I was talking about adding, uh, you know, live percussion and also echo. And this is kind of how I do it. And what I might also do is I might go back and do another round, which I'll do a video of that where I'll add reverb and it's just reverb. And I might use two different reverbs and change the tone and the decay and the type of reverb as I'm going throughout the track. And I'll pick which bits I like best. I mean, I won't keep this much uh, echo in anything like that. It's just too much. Uh, subtle stuff is cool. But what I can do is, obviously I would do the whole track, but if I go, okay, I don't like that piece there, maybe I drag it over here and we see how that sounds. So if I throw it in, I go, okay. It works. A tip that I do have is generally once you hit a chorus, like, or the main, you know, boost of your track that you know, you want it, that's that's the money, that we call that the money, the, the money of the chorus. You don't want to have echo going on throughout there. It's too much, because that's generally when you might have horns, vocals, uh, pads, synth pads, whatever you're gonna have, that's the crux of your song. Don't add it there. So if you have it, remove it. So if I'm listening here. For me, in this track so far, that's the chorus. Uh, coming out. You can hear it's space, there's not as much going on, so you're gonna hear these little uh, subtle echo shots and then if you don't like it there and the track builds every like four to eight bars so you might use it here so i say be judicious where you use your echo on your snare because i like to actually do multiple levels of echo throughout the track and edit them down the way i like so they all kind of tie in uh, sometimes it's going to be call and answer where I'm having an echo from the snare and then maybe there's an echo on the hi-hat or there's an echo on the horns then it goes to echo on the guitar skanks but this is just one uh, aspect of this track and that's just the snare and just the echo and again I might do another echo later that has longer shots with more feedback that I can tail in but this gets you started right here right today I hope you picked up something I hope you go ahead and try it on your own I will do a version that's plug-in uh, in the box only because that is a different beast altogether and I find that requires a lot more work but it is possible it just depends and I know there's guys out there um, who are strictly in the box using dub and dubbing out and they do a fantastic job you'd never know the difference and they've really figured out how to do that and uh, but next time I'll look at in the box but for now hope that helps and I'll see you again next week <laughs>